I'm joined here today by the one and only Bilal Muhammad set to take on Takashi Sato. I hope I'm saying that correctly. At uh, UFC 242, Bilal, what's up, man? How are you? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. Thank you for asking. And uh, I assume you must be excited taking uh, a fight here on this big pay-per-view, UFC 242 in uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi to be more specific. Uh, what's the emotion like, man, heading into this fight? Man, I'm just excited to get back in there. Uh, I've been on the sideline for a little bit, a couple months, uh, waiting for this card. It's a huge card, so uh, I'm happy to be on this card, especially being in the Middle East and being in the Middle East today. I feel it would be a good uh, card to be, uh, get some exposure on. And, uh, man... Can't wait to get down there and just put on a show. I believe last time we saw you was in April. Is that why we haven't seen you? Because you've been waiting for this card, or has it just been you know trying to get a fight lined up? Or what's been going on? Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, well, uh, Ali was telling me that we'll probably wait for this card, just because you know how big it was, uh, how big of a card it was. So I said, all right, I'll wait. And uh, sometimes you have to. Uh, I like getting better in the gym too. Sometimes you like to just keep. When you have camps back to back to back. Uh, sometimes you don't get any better, so I like uh, being in the gym, learning more, and uh, I feel like I'll, I'll bring some more tools to show in my fight. So I, know, I feel like it was a perfect amount of time to take off. And uh, what have you been doing with this time off? Like you mentioned, you want to get better and everything. Are you just in the gym? Are you focusing on maybe recovering from, you know, we know fighters always have an injury here and there. Uh, what's been going on for you these past couple of months? No, i basically been in the gym the whole time, uh, just basically training and working. Uh, we had a couple guys with fights, so uh, helping them out. Uh, when you're in a, a gym like group sport, there's always somebody has a fight coming up, man. So it's, you always gotta uh, help everybody out. It's like a kind of like family mentality where it's if it's your fight, I'm there for you. If it's my fight, he's there for me. So uh, it all worked out good. Kept me in the gym, kept me uh, active and motivated to help teammates and just help myself get better. And uh, you mentioned Rufus Sport. Are you currently in Chicago, and then you go to Milwaukee, or are you in Milwaukee so that way you're closer to the gym? Uh, I have a apartment in uh, Milwaukee. I'm there uh, four days a week, and I'm in Chicago three days a week. And uh, in Milwaukee, is that where we see you with uh, one of the best bromances on Twitter, Mr. Jared Gordon himself? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my brother right there. Uh, we moved together about a, a year ago, and uh, been BFFS ever since. And uh, we know everybody on Twitter, they love getting the updates and everything. Uh, what kind of started this friendship for you guys? Is it just uh, before you moved in, you guys moved in and just clicked? Uh, how, how did we get where we are today? Uh, yeah, I feel like we just clicked perfectly. Uh, like I met him at, at the UFC uh, retreat uh, back when the UFC had it. Uh, I think like two years ago, he was like Paul Felder's friend. Paul Felder brought him over. And then uh, he came over, came down to visit one time to help Paul Felder fight uh, Ally Quinta that one time. And then, uh, yeah, uh, we, had, we both had per uh, personalities that matched together. Uh, we both like making fun of people, so uh, I think it worked out perfectly. And then uh, he said he, was gonna, he wanted to look for a new gym, and he felt that we uh, we matched him down there at Luke's Sport, and he liked the gym, so he wanted to come and stay down there. So I had an open room, and uh, the rest is history. <laughs> of course, and we know people, they love following you guys on Twitter and everything. Uh, what are the chances we're going to get a TV show featuring you guys? <laughs> I'm waiting for ESPN, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to throw it out there. And, uh, we got to get a couple more, uh, probably after we get big, bigger uh, winning streaks, uh, they'll start realizing uh, what they're missing out on. So, uh, But uh, we got a lot of people offering us uh, shows and podcasts. So we got some stuff in the works that we're uh, trying to figure out. Oh, man, that's interesting. Any Anything big, like anything where you're like, oh, man, I can't believe they came to me, or is it just uh, kind of small stuff to start with? Uh, yeah, you know, we had some people from, uh, like, ABC and ESPN, uh, to try to talk to us, so, uh, we got some stuff that the fans are gonna be, uh, it's gonna be fun about. Oh, that's crazy, I mean, ABC and stuff, yeah, that's big, that's not, a. is this something that you feel like it's gonna happen, or is it just kind of, you gotta figure out a way to kind of balance your fight career with, uh, I guess, this newfound fame? Yeah, yeah, it's just balancing the fight career, like I said, I'm a fighter first, so I don't like, uh, jumping up or anything like that, I don't like... <laughs> kind of night before the ass type thing, so uh, uh, we'll see where it goes after this fight. That's all I'm concentrating right now. Uh, nobody cares about uh, what you have to say or what you think unless you're winning, so I got to keep this uh, these wins coming and uh, we got to keep these uh, this ball rolling. And uh, you mentioned winning. Obviously, your last fight was a great fight. It was a master class. I feel like it kind of reminded everybody how good you are and everything because you did have the winning streak before the Jeff Neal fight. Uh, what was it like coming off of that victory, man? Was it a relief? I mean, what did you think of all, all that? Yeah, it was just uh, one of those where I was happy to get the taste out of my mouth. Uh, I hate losing, man. Uh, 
I took the hell off bed. Uh, I was right back in the gym, right training. I was trying to get any fight I could. And then they offered that fight. I thought it was a great fight because uh, he was on a big streak before that one. And he was just like coming off a couple of best spots. So I knew that he had a big name that people knew. So I knew if I would go in there and uh, beat him, I'd be right back in the mix. So I feel like it put me back up there already. So if I win that one, I win this one. Uh, hopefully get one more before the end of the year. And I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, after the Jeff Neal fight, people kind of put you in this, I don't want to say gatekeeper, but kind of like Bilal's an elite fighter, and if you can beat him, you can get to that next level. But it seems that with this fight against Curtis, it's kind of reminded people, like, hold on, I'm trying to get to that level. I'm trying to get towards the title shot. Do you feel like you kind of put things right back where they need to be with that last fight? Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm reading out of that Twitter stuff. Anybody talks trash on Twitter. Everybody's always going to talk trash. Everybody got something negative to say. Jeff Neal, you just saw his last fight, he just knocked out Nico Price in the first round or second round. So, uh, and then me, I'm taking fights against anybody. I want to fight the guys that are coming off wins. I don't want to fight anybody coming off losses. And all these ranked guys are all afraid to fight. So uh, those are the fight, tough fights I have to take. Uh, so I want to stay active. I don't want to sit on the sidelines. You guys, some of these guys calling for big, big fights, but they're all been sitting on the sidelines for more than a year. I don't even remember the last time Santiago Ponsonibio fought. He's been out for like 17 years. And then uh, he's talking about I should fight Conor McGregor next or something like that. Uh, like a lot of these guys don't make sense. They want to sit on the sidelines. People forget about you when you're on the sidelines. I want to stay active. I want to stay in the public eye. I want to stay in the cage. That's where that's where I belong. That's where I love to be. So uh, when I even when I get a number next to my name, man, if there is nobody with another number next to their name, I'll I'll fight some of these guys that aren't ranked. I just want to keep fighting. And uh, you mentioned staying uh, high in the public side and everything. I feel like you're one of the fighters because of your social media game. Obviously, it's better than a lot of guys. Do you feel like the fans hold you in high regard just because, you know, you're a good follower on social media? We know that when you go out, you put on a show and all these fights. Do you feel like you're getting held in high honor? Or do you feel like maybe you get a little bit more hate than uh, you should? No, like I feel like you have to nowadays. It's you got to be an entertainer too, man. Uh, I know I go in there. I know the fans love the way I fight. But you got to show your personality outside of the cage as well, and I feel like I'm I'm starting to get a good, uh, do a good job of that. Uh, when I first started, you know, I was more thinking that you got to be motivational and stuff on Twitter and uh, <laughs> and on Instagram, and uh, people don't care about that honestly. Like I'll sit there and I'll post a motivational video to get like 1,000 views, and then I'll post a funny video and I get like 15,000 views because that's what people care about. Nobody cares about that uh, that stuff anymore. Nobody feels like. People, there's so many people faking that motivational stuff that people can't take it seriously anymore. There's so many people out there that have their little workout uh, Instagrams, or workout Instagram pages, or Twitter Instagram pages, and they're all posting these uh, videos like, "Oh yes, you can be this too. Just pay 9.99, and I'll give you a workout plan." And I feel like it's it's flooding the market. So I, I feel like it, just me, just being myself. I feel like fans are, are catching on to that. And they know what's real and what's not real. I feel like they understand uh, that I'm just a normal, down to earth person. For sure, I agree with you. I feel like you're one of the fighters. You come off really genuine, and even the video, uh, I forgot which one. I think it was with the soccer ball or something where uh, you, you stopped their game and you signed it. I thought that was uh, that was genius. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was funny, man. That was literally a random kid. Uh, <laughs> I just walked up to him and I asked him, yo, yeah, hey, can we make this video? Because that Olympic lady, uh, I forget what her name yeah, was. Megan her, Rapino, uh, yeah, Megan Rapinoe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. After I saw that video, I had to like, show the kid the video to make him understand what it was. And then I was like, yeah, man, I'll make your Instagram famous. And he was like, oh, I don't even have Instagram. I mean, oh, that's cool, man. Don't worry. I'll put your name out there. He said, all right, yeah. cool. <laughs> no, it was perfect. I feel like not only was the timing perfect, everybody's talking about it, but it's like, uh, you know, everybody started retweeting. I thought that that really was genius. Uh, whoever came up with that, it was definitely a great thing for you. Yeah, yeah. I was literally working out at the stairs, and I literally just thought about it as I saw a kid at the top of the stairs kicking the soccer ball, and it just, like, clicked. And I was like, all right, let's just, let's just do it. If, he, if I go down and up one more time and he's still left there, I'll ask him to make the video. <laughs> So uh, it all ended up working out. It was pretty funny. And uh, let's talk about this fight a little bit. I feel like we talked about everything except the fight. Uh, was this an opponent that you'd heard of when uh, I assume Ali came to you with this name? Was this someone that you'd heard of before? Uh, I've seen him fight before. I've seen him. Uh, well, he's only had one fight in the UFC against uh, Ben Saunders. But I pay attention to all 170 fighters that are in the UFC. So uh, uh, I've seen that fight. And uh, I know that he trains at a really good gym, at Henry Hoof's gym. So uh, I, pay, I pay attention, so I, I know where he's cut from. I know he's going to be a, a, a tough fight for me. And uh, how do you think you match up with him? Is this a fight where you see a lot of advantages? Maybe it's a little bit closer than people think. Uh, what do you think of the matchup? Uh, I mean, I, I feel like I match up well with uh, everybody, honestly. Uh, I feel like he's more of a striker. I, I'm comfortable striking with him. I feel like uh, I fought uh, 
a lot of tough guys, a lot of tough southpaws and southpaws. Basically, it's giving my like sixth southpaw fight in the UFC. So uh, I feel like it's just another day in the office for me, uh, and especially coming off the Jeff Neal fight two two fights ago. Kind of like the same style, more of a striker, boxer. Uh, he is. So uh, I think it'll be a fun fight for the fans, and uh, I feel like it, it'll be one of those fights that uh, can steal the show uh, in Abu Dhabi, uh, especially with a lot of the grapplers that are on the card. So I go out there, put on a good show, get a finish, get a knockout or something like that. Uh, it'll leave an uh, image in people's head. And the Abu Dhabi card, uh, how much does it mean uh, to you to be on this card? Because I'm sure uh, this was something you guys were planning for a little bit. How much does it mean to you to be on this card? Uh, it means a lot, man. Uh, I feel like uh, nowadays with uh, what's going on in Palestine, a lot of people don't know what's happening out there. And especially in the U.S., like they don't really show mainstream media or anything like that. What's what's going on down there? So I feel like uh, in uh, Abu Dhabi, the people out there will know what the flag means when I bring it out there, and uh, will know what a Palestinian fighter, uh, uh, how strong a Palestinian fighter is. And I feel like I'll get a lot more cheers, uh, even when I fight here, man. It's crazy. Like it'll be, I'll, I'll be in a cage, and people don't understand I'm American as well. I'm Palestinian American, and they'll sit there and uh, start chanting out USA, USA. <laughs> My brothers and stuff will be in the audience and they'll start laughing. It'll be, it's hilarious. So, uh, but like I feel like being in the Middle East and being being a Middle Eastern fighter, I feel like it'll be a good uh, a good change of uh, like fan base basically. And I feel like I'll, I'll be able to click with a lot of people on there. And so, is this an opportunity for you to make uh, more fans from a different region? Like we know uh, the Americans are aware of you. Is this your, your kind of opportunity to remind people, hey, I'm Middle Eastern. I'm one of you guys. Uh, is that a big opportunity for you? Yeah, yeah. I feel like it'll be a huge opportunity for me, especially you know. Nowadays, a lot of people only realize, uh, only think of Khabib when they think of like a, a Muslim fighter or something like that. But he's Russian. I feel like Abu Dhabi being in the Middle East, being Muslim, uh, I feel like I'll get a lot more people that will start uh, realizing who I am, and they'll they'll want to know more about me. And uh, what do you plan on doing when you're out there? Is this just a fly in, get in the fight, and then go home, or do you plan on maybe visiting around and uh, kind of taking advantage of this, sort of this big trip? Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely gonna be visiting around. We're going out there like seven, eight days early, so, uh, and I'm not one of those guys that cuts a lot of weight, so I, like, wherever I go, whether it's there or Utica, New York, it's always trying to find out what's the things to do down there, what's the things to see, and especially being first time out there in Abu Dhabi and, like, an hour and a half drive from Dubai, uh, I think we're definitely going to be able to see that, and then uh, Jared's flying down with me the same day, so uh, we're going to have to sit there and do our little romance trip, <laughs> uh, first vacation together, and uh, go check some stuff out, man. Uh, I like getting my mind off the fight. I'm not one of those guys that has to sit in the hotel room and just think of blood the whole time. I, I like being out there, getting the scenery, man, uh, hitting jogs, going, uh, seeing nice uh, views. And uh, Dubai has all of that, man. So it's going to be awesome to be down there and see there, uh, just get in there with the people, uh, talk to a lot of them. So it's going to be cool to be down there. And uh, I just have one more for you looking at this fight. Uh, how do you get the job done in this fight? I assume you see yourself winning, hopefully. Uh, how do you get the job done in this one? Man, I'm coming for a finish, man. I'm coming for the, uh, to go out there, whether it's uh, by choke, knockout, head kick, anything, man. I'm coming out there to, to, to be a finish, man. I want to go out there at the end of that trip, at the end of that uh, huge show with people remembering my name. That's right. Remember the name, Muhammad. There you go. <laughs> All right, man. Well, uh, thanks so much for the time. I really appreciate it. We look forward to this fight. It's going to be a great one for sure. Thank you, Ma. I appreciate the time, man. Uh, Tune in.